Hi there, it's Smith Thea Ford with Renal Diet HQ, and I'm going live today because I want to talk about the nutrients that you need to improve your health with kidney disease. So yesterday I asked the question in the group and I said, what do you think? Let me see exactly. Um, <laughs> find my notes. Um, I said, what nutrients do you think are most important to basically maintaining your kidney health? And what do you think nutrient do you think is most important to managing and slowing the progression of your kidney disease and why? I got um, a few comments and I appreciate those. So let me tell you what I was thinking. So somebody said water because it keeps you hydrated and being dehydrated is hard on your kidneys. Somebody said sodium due to fluid overload and then um, water and sodium basically. And then I said, my answer was that I thought it was protein and sodium. But the truth of the matter is, is that it's not necessarily the same for everybody. When you first get kidney disease, it's important to manage your sodium and your protein. Those are the two that you should start with. Should you drink plenty of water? Yes. Um, if you're taking a, a medication that causes you to retain um, potassium, then you should manage your potassium and do whatever your doctor says. But um, I want to go over what protein and, and sodium are, why they're important. And then um, highlight a couple other things that I was thinking. So protein, you, your uh, kidneys do this thing where they remove the waste products from your body. When your body, <laughs> oh, let's see if I can explain this well. Um, so you get protein, you eat protein. It's broken down into what are called amino acids and absorbed into your body. And then your body takes those amino acid pieces and puts them back together for how it needs them into a hormone or repairing muscle tissue, making cell membranes, all kinds of things. So that's why um, protein, it should be limited because those then become waste products, but they also should be um, you make sure you get some, and there's a lot of things with protein. Your dairy products all have protein. Beans, legumes have protein. Vegetables have a small amount of protein. Pastas have a small amount of protein. Typically, obviously meat, fish, turkey, chicken, all those can have protein. So, um, when you first get diagnosed with kidney disease, your kidneys are, have lost about half their function typically. So the process that it goes through to filter out that urine, that urea out of your blood to make the urine, and then move into um, basically cleaning your blood, now you have half the capacity. So we typically eat more protein than we actually need anyway. So when you actually uh, manage your protein intake, then you actually are probably eating closer to what is a normal amount that we actually need versus having the excess protein that your body then has to either convert into fat, use for muscle tissue, or um, use as, as burn as calories. So if anyone ever tells you to just stop eating protein altogether, that would be extremely difficult to do, but it's also not healthy. So there's usually a amount that they recommend that you take in, and that's about 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you're overweight, if you're more than 25% overweight, then you usually need to adjust that amount of protein. So you wouldn't necessarily take it based on your actual weight, but you would do it based on an adjusted body weight. And you get that protein. So say, say you weigh 100 kilograms. That would mean you weigh 220 pounds. Um, and you can Google how to, you know, convert weight into kilograms. But you get that and you have your uh, 100 kilograms. So that means you should have 80 grams of protein per day. We recommend that about 50% of that protein comes from um, animal or high biological value sources, dairy, 
eggs, meat, cheese, those um, meat, fish, you know, animal products, about half of that amount come from those. So if you're thinking about it, and, and if you're vegetarian or vegan, you know, it's not a mandatory thing that you get that. It's um, actually... I've been doing a lot of research on the vegetarian diet, and I look forward to um, talking to you more about that in the future. If you want to know more about the vegetarian diet, if you let me know beneath the video, I would love to hear more about that, what you're interested in learning about with the vegetarian diet, what you kind of need to know. But um, come December, I believe I'm going to have a educational training. So anyway, um, if you're still eating animal products, then you would do about um, the amount, about 40 grams of protein. So one ounce of um, a meat product or like an egg, one egg has about seven grams of protein. Therefore, you're going to eat about six ounces of meat or animal products per day. Uh, four ounces of milk or eight ounces of milk has you know, a certain number of grams of protein. You can read it on the label. You've got cheese, one ounce of cheese has so much protein. So pay attention to all that. And then, um, so this, we're talking about stage 3A, 3B type thing. And the other 40 grams you're going to get from your vegetables, from your beans, from your pasta. Um, fruit does sometimes contain a little bit of protein. So, you're going to get your the rest of your protein from that. And that's going to limit the amount of waste products, which then helps your kidneys because you're not, um, you know, forcing them to have to eliminate as much uh, waste product. And then sodium. One of the biggest problems we have with kidney disease is the blood pressure, but not only blood pressure, just it seems like sodium can cause a lot of damage without really having high blood pressure. Um, sodium should be limited to 20, 2,000 to 2,300 milligrams per day. I think two or 300 milligrams is not a lot of variation. Um, most of the time people eat six or 7,000 milligrams a day. So things you can do to lower salt, take the salt off your table, take the salt out of your food. When I was growing up, we would, um, <laughs> we would make corn on the cob and my grandmother would add butter and salt to the pan when she was cooking them, the corn in the dish. And then we would add more salt and butter at the table. And when I got into college, it, it dawned on me that I don't need the butter and the salt to cook it. I, and then I have no control kind of how much of that I get, but I can add the butter at the table or the salt at the table and that limits it. So think about when you're cooking things, do you automatically just add salt or have you, you know, converted to just more adding it at the table? I encourage you to use other spices. Spices are on sale at Nick and East Kitchen this week. So if you go to nickandeastkitchen.com, I was gonna have a little banner, but I don't see it. Um, anyway, we're having a sale at Nick and East Kitchen this week, 20% off automatically. So head on over there and, um, I'll see if I can, it's not letting me post a comment. So I'll post a comment after the video. So salt and protein. I think that's why they're most important. Um, potassium can be important if it's, if you're affected, but when you, this is my philosophy. When you first start with kidney disease, you start with kind of those big, big rocks, the things you can make a big difference in. And what I have finally kind of started to realize is that people focus way too much on the potassium and phosphorus. You know, when they have stage 3A or stage 3B, maybe they don't even have a, a potassium um, elevation in their blood or like someone commented yesterday, maybe they, um, have a problem with keeping potassium. They have to actually take potassium. So let's start with the things that are going to make the big difference, which is the protein limitation and the salt limitation. And 
start by saying, okay, how can I make more soups from scratch? So I'm not putting so much salt into my food. How can I make more um, healthy meals that I don't add salt at the table? How can I use different spices? All those things together. When you go to a potluck, how do I, what do I identify as the right foods at that potluck? How much am I getting? Ways that you can lower your protein intake. If you're like, I really need, you know, more protein than that then um, ways that you can feel fuller are by eating more fruits and vegetables. And so what we do is we tell you, you know, limit your protein and limit your potassium. And then we say, don't eat any of these vegetables when really you don't have to have that limitation. And yet um, it's going to help you to eat those fruits and vegetables because you are going to feel more full and you'll kind of get through and get used to the change that's required with chronic kidney disease. So I'm on a mission to stop people from thinking that they need to start with potassium limitations. And I want you to know you should start with protein and sodium restrictions and then go from there. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to remind you about the sale. I was going to talk about a casserole dish. I have some um, casserole carriers over there that are also on sale that would make great gifts, lots of different colors, but they're neat because you have your casserole on the bottom. And then they have kind of like a tent part at the top. So you can put a different dish in the top and they're real easy to carry. And then you could store your um, utensils and stuff in the front. There's like black, leopard print, polka dot, all kinds of things. So head on over there and look at those. I'm sorry, I didn't have it for you today to show you. But um, I really just wanted to go, I guess, get that off my chest, but go forward with that and let you know um, I want you to focus on salt and protein. So I'm actually thinking about doing a short challenge in the month of um, December that I'm going to talk about next week that you can join in and we'll do it together, you know, kind of start by figuring out this piece, this part of it. And if you've watched this far and you want to let me know that you're interested in that, just tag below, say interested. And um, I'll make sure you get more info on that. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to head over to Nick and East Kitchen and check out what we have. Got a 20% off sale this week for Veterans Day um, in celebration. And it goes through Sunday night. And um, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.